Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Well, I got some updates on the 956ER. So we went ahead and just pinched off that heater core line so he could run that evening and uh, get that field finish that he wanted to do. And then I ordered a heater valve um, to go into the, the roof. So the heater valve runs in series with one of the heater core lines and it's got a valve that opens and closes so it can shut off the hot engine coolant flow to the heater core. So I went ahead and the next day I went out there and replaced this heater valve here. So you got like a little actuator that runs a little ball valve in here. And when I took it apart, you can see a chunk of rubber stuck in this valve. So I think the internal seals kind of came apart in it and then, you know, jammed that, that ball valve open. So it was allowing coolant to go into the heater core and that's why she wasn't cooling properly. So I swapped that out and then of course you have to recalibrate it, recalibrate the valve. And then the next time I started the tractor, guess what? The exhaust filter restricted again. And then this time it had a code for a abnormal um, rate, sooting rate. So for some reason, the exhaust filter is getting sooted up way quicker than it's supposed to. So I got to thinking and I noticed that the coolant tank had been blackened, but we've had problems with this tractor with oil getting in the coolant. We've done um, a head gasket uh, bolt pip. So um, we got new sealed head bolts that go in there to supposedly, it's supposed to keep oil from getting into the coolant. Um, that pip has been around for a little bit. Um, so far, I think it's doing a pretty good job of keeping the, the oil out of the coolant. And uh, back before we had that pip, we were just doing head gaskets on them. Um, so we're now doing the, the bolt pip. Anyway, that's been done. The oil cooler's been changed. Um, but sometimes it's really hard to get that oil out of the system. And even if you do change the coolant tank, sometimes some of that residual oil can get into that coolant tank and make it black. But once I got to looking a little harder at this tank, it looked more like exhaust soot that has been in there. So what I did was I took the pipe off the EGR cooler, the outlet pipe. So in between the cooler and the EGR valve. And when I took that pipe off, steaming coolant came out of that port. So um, the EGR cooler is definitely cracked and it's leaking coolant into the EGR stream, which is going right into the intake of the engine. And we could be having, you know, excessive coolant going into our exhaust filter and plugging it up. So I got the tractor back here in the shop. It's currently in the ICU and we're gonna put the EGR cooler on. Um, I took the pipe off between the turbo and the exhaust stack and looked inside um, to see the surface of the DOC to make sure we didn't have any um, damage to the DOC and it looks fine. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a EGR cooler on it. Um, we're gonna flush the system with some water and detergent. Um, and then we're going to um, put a new EGR valve on it because that thing's all gummed up and it doesn't want to move very good. Um, so we'll put a new valve on it and then we're going to put a new, once we get everything flushed out clean, we'll put new hoses and a new coolant tank on it. And then I'm going to take this thing outside and we're going to do another service regeneration because now, you know, the soot level says that it's very high again. Um, so we're going to do another service regeneration and I'll monitor the data and hopefully that's all that this thing will need and it can go back to the field. So I'm gonna bring you guys in and uh, check out those, the EGR cooler. I'll show you, you know, what to look for um, when those things leak coolant and everything, but uh, tool time. I got a new monster. This is a new Milwaukee fuel three quarter drive, one key. Um, I opted for a, a six amp hour battery for it. Um, if you guys ever watched the torque test channel, they tested all the Milwaukee batteries and seen which ones you know had the highest torque output and the 6.0 surprisingly will do better than an 8.0 or a 12.0 out of the gate. So opted for the 6.0 plus it's a lot cheaper. Um, 
I sometimes I run into some bolts that are like inch and a half and um, you know taking wheels and tires on and off you know my half inch gun does it no problem but you know I'm just wanting to save on her a little bit so got the three quarter you know take the the heavy beatings basically so um, we're gonna go show you the EGR cooler all right well here's the culprit so if you take the the outlet pipe off of here and you shine your light down in here you can see how wet it is down inside there it's supposed to be you know black sooty and dry in there have no cooling in there so we know we need to fix this for sure and uh you know that guy sits in there you've seen me if you've watched uh my hydraulic nightmare videos you've seen me um, do a EGR cooler just like this one except I don't have to change this u-pipe I get to bolt the new one in because um, some of the combines will take an updated cooler where it clamps on instead of bolts um, so I don't have to mess with these dreaded bolts up here that I like to break off so that's you know the only plus to this job basically um, so we'll get the cooler installed in here and then in the EGR valve flush the system all that stuff just like I talked about but I'm gonna leave this pipe off the turbo and I'm gonna fire it up and I'm gonna see what color smoke comes out of this turbo you know is it black is it blue is it white you know I want to see if we've got anything that's gonna cause excessive soot into this stack right here so I think it's gonna be you know I know it was pumping coolant into the engine and burning it and I know that does clog DPF so um, but I just want to double check and make sure we don't have something else going on besides the coolant. So we'll leave that pipe off and just run her straight out of the turbo, see what kind of smoke she blows. All right, well, I was wanting to show you guys the, the rest of the repair on that the EGR cooler, but uh, ended up having to do some service calls and, you know, things got crazy like they usually do this time of year. So anyway, I got the thing running. I got it all flushed out real good. Um, I ended up changing the oil on it. Um, the oil did not look very good. It looked pretty thin. Um, it didn't seem like it had coolant in it though. Um, so I went ahead and changed the oil. I'm going to have the customer monitor the engine oil level, see if we're gaining oil. Cause I'm, I, I'm kind of concerned that we might have an injector problem and we're just dumping a bunch of fuel into the crankcase. And you know, that could be another reason why, um, the DPF is plugging up, but um, when I ran it without the exhaust pipe on the turbo, you know, it just had a little puff of black smoke when it started. No blue smoke or white smoke or anything like that after I got done. So um, I'm just going to, it needs to get some hours on it. I did a service regenerate on it, regeneration on it again, and it was fine after that. <clears throat> so I'm going to let him go ahead and take it. We're going to get some hours on it, see if it sits up again. Um, if the exhaust filter gets restricted again, I think we're going to be diving into the injectors on that unit. So, um, anyway, on the road again, um, we're here at one of my really good customers' farms, and supposedly we got a broken ground cable on an engine. So, I'm not exactly sure which cable it is, but uh, we're going to figure that out. I had my service manager already ordered a cable, and I brought it with me. I just hope it's the right one. So, um, let's check that out. Okay. Well, there's one 9620RX. There's the 9570. That's the unit we're going to be working on today. And we got another 9620RX. We got a fleet of 9RXs here. So let's get the hood open on this guy. Look at 
that snapped the eyelet right off this thing. Right, this ground cable goes from the starter to the frame ground. Broken. Perfect. New ground cable. By golly, it's the right one. Just don't believe it. Clean the ground connection up here, maybe. It's a short, stout little cable, and that ain't a thin, floppy piece. For that to just snap, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Whatever. You're out with the old, in with the new. So I got a ground peg going this way, and then the other point is pointing this way, and the cable's straight. So it would have to twist, like, big time. Maybe that's why it broke. Let's look at this old one a little closer. So this old cable has been twisted. So why wouldn't they just crimp this thing 90 degrees this way and then it'd just go boop and you wouldn't have to twist it. Whatever. What can you do? Besides get one custom made but mount the field that. Yes, good enough for now. Let me bring in here. So, ground to the frame, that's where goes the starter. Well, that thing's straight when you begin, and that's what you end up with. It snapped off right here. You know, if that cramp was just 90 degrees off, this thing would just go whoop, fit right in there and you wouldn't have to put any twist in it whatsoever, but it is what it is. So, get the shield thrown back on this guy and start her up. And I thought I'd better check this positive cable. And it's loose. Wonderful, tighten that up. Okay, cables are on tight. Let's fire this beast up, see if it'll start. Sweet, she's alive. I don't think she started too good with that broken ground cable. I didn't try it before, but I bet it didn't. All right, that one's done. Off to the next one. All 
All right, we're in route to go look at a 9630. Um, you guys might recognize this one. It's the one I did the uh, axle bearing video on. So, uh, but it doesn't have any problems with the axle. It's actually got an AC cooling issue. It says it's not getting cool in there. So this time of year, we're always getting AC calls. To be an ag technician, you gotta know your air conditioning in and out. So it's a really good idea if you want to be a, an ag tech you know, you're going to get a lot more education about air conditioning if you actually go to a tech school. You know, you're going to learn the, the ins and outs and, you know, the different states that the refrigerant's in throughout the system. So it better helps you understand what's going on in the system. So um, it's a real good idea to go to a tech school for that. And I recommend the John Deere Ag Tech program. So we're in route. We're only a couple miles away. Um, jam of the day. About forgot the jam of the day. Um, let's do Dying to Believe by Papa Roach. Um, it's off their new album. It's really good. Check it out. I think I see a dust cloud up here. It might be the tractor. All right, here she is. We got AC gauges hooked up to it, and I did notice it was leaking a little bit out of the low side service fitting, so we'll have to address that. But hook the gauges up, see if we had pressure, and you know, we do have some pressure in it, so we'll fire this thing up and see what it does. Well, I think the clutch is smoked. I've got 12 volts coming in, but uh, she doesn't even click whenever you hook this up. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Should hear the clutch engage, but it does nothing. Got 12.28 coming into it. And I was taking this on and off whenever it was running. And you could just barely hear something click in, but then it wasn't uh, sucking my low side down. It was just staying right about 60. So um, can't get just the clutch for this compressor. So we're gonna have to put a new compressor on this guy and get a new service valve here all right i made it back with parts i got a compressor receiver dryer and i got my mobile recovery unit here so we're gonna recover the refrigerant put it into that tank to where we can recycle it later and then we're gonna put new refrigerant in it when we're done so just gotta get the side shields off peel the belt off get this little wire shield out of the way and take the cap the manifold cap off and four bolts Take the compressor off, put a new compressor on, wham bam, done. Alright, she's sucking her down. Master pull. Mobile recovery unit. I took my my gauges up, the AC compressor, the old line comes down, goes into here. Just follow the instructions on the screen to recover, turn it on. Got a wire sensor going into the tank. New line going in. Okay, when I replace these compressors, I don't take these lines out of the manifold because nine times out of 10, you'll strip the threads out trying to get those out. So I just take these bolts out, leave the manifold hanging in the air, swap the compressor out, bolt it in because the new compressor's got a new o-ring on it so that's what we're gonna do so it'll look just like that all right now we're gonna swap the receiver dryer out and this one's underneath the cab there so get the lines off it new o-rings new dryer and then we can put the system under a vac all right putting on a vacuum it's holding good vacuum okay so Putting in refrigerant, R34, and we're it. Going in there, we've got to put four pounds in. Not sure um, if it's gonna charge it all the way statically like this. We'll probably have to start it and suck it in the low side the rest of the way. She's blowing nice and cold now. All right, we got another one fixed, but uh, that's all the time we have for today. It's time to go home. It's quitting time. I'm barely gonna make it back on time, so. 
We'll just have to see what awaits us tomorrow morning. And I'll try to put it in this video. All right, it's the next morning. And I've already tore into a tractor. And I drove about 45 minutes north to go look at this 8320R. Um, the customer said that the right brake pedal was sticking down and then the left one was like floppy loose. So I uh, took the steering column apart and I found the issue. I'll bring you guys in here. All right, so here we got the brake pedal assembly. So you got two rods that attach to your brake pedals and they go through the floor through these little poly bushings and those I could tell it was rubbing really hard on this right pedal on this bushing so I took this bolt out and pulled these rods out and normally these rods will just slip right out of those bushings well I had to like wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and finally got them out of there um, and then I noticed that 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 bushing was cocked in there and you couldn't move it at all so I just unbolted them from the floor put them in my vise and cleaned all the dirt out of them and lubed them up real good to where that ball would swivel real nice and easy and then stuffed them back in the floor and just kind of lightly snug the bolts to where I could put the rods back in tighten this bolt back up and get these rods you know to center that bushing basically where I wanted it and then tighten the bolts down and now this thing works perfectly before I would push my foot down and that pedal would just stay down and it wouldn't return like that but the left one would and then if you lift it up on this pedal it would just stay but now it goes back like it's supposed to these pedals should be just like this push down and return and the customer said that he would hit the brake and then the tractor wouldn't move well if this brake pedal's down and it's pushing the brake switch, this thing will, this IVT will auto clutch and it won't move. So if that brake pedal sticks down and it's pressing that brake switch, then the transmission's going to auto clutch and it won't move. And that was his main concern because the tractor wouldn't move. But now we got those pedals working free. It should work just fine. So I'm going to put this column back together and he also wants me to check his steering stops because he has this thing uh, the, the wheel set up out wide and he doesn't think it turns tight enough and there's a steering stop adjustment that I'm going to take a look at next okay so here is the steering cylinder coming out and this is a ILS suspension independent link suspension on this thing so um, this is actually the lock that holds in the nut for the steering stop and the cylinder and you take this one bolt out here and then you can pull this out and you actually use this as a tool to turn this nut right here but on the the back side here we have a gauge one two and three so if you were had a tire setup that was all the way narrow, you stick this in like here, you could tell we're at three. Well, he's all the way wide, so we want the steering cylinder to be able to come out more, right? So we're gonna bring this to a one right here, and that should give him the tightest turning radius with this wide tire setup that he has. So we're gonna use this tool. You get, it's got a half inch drive and square in it and you just put a ratchet on it. And then we're just gonna stick this in here like this. If I can get it in there, it's all dirty, but stick it in there like that, snap your ratchet. And then we're just gonna loosen this nut out until, flip this around, until we're at a one instead of a three and then he'll have a tighter turning radius. Okay, I got that nut backed out, and now we're at the first notch, we're at a one. So we're gonna do this to the other side, put these on, lock it together, and then I'll steer it, and I wanna make sure that the tire doesn't rub the frame back here or back here on the transmission, and then I think he'll be a lot happier with that. Let's see how she turns now. Oh yeah, that's 
a lot farther. Still not rubbing anywhere. that one's done off to the next one all right well the boss just called me and i gotta head to indiana to go look at a 9620rx that has uh, communication codes with the scv so um, looks like it's about an hour away from my location now but uh, we're gonna head over to indiana and go look at this tractor we just sold so that ought to be a fun little road trip Gonna have to listen to some jams for sure. Possibly the Certified Wrench Podcast. Well, I'm hunting this tractor down in the crossroads of America. We're in uh, western central Indiana. I'm not really sure what uh, town we're close to. We're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere looking for a 9620RX. I stopped at the farm. A customer gave me a, dropped me a pen on Google Maps so I could drive to this guy's location I'm four and a half miles away so giddy up well sorry I couldn't film that whole diagnostic process I went straight into the heat of battle I got to the field and the tractor wasn't here and called the customer and he said no he's headed to that field he'll be there in a few minutes well 10 minutes later he showed up and then um, I got in the tractor and it was acting up it had a uh, codes for the SCC, which it wasn't communicating with any of the SCVs. It had communication codes for SCV 1 through 5. So I shut the key off, turn the key back on, all the codes go to stored, start the tractor, everything works. Great. So then I went back and I unplugged SCV 1 and I checked power and ground, you know, going power and ground straight on the, the connector and had 12.5, which is good. And then I checked can high, which had 2.5, 2.5 volts, I should say. And then can low was 2.2 volts, which was good. So then I checked, I got it my 30 foot ground lead out, retractable lead, and I hooked it up to the frame ground and brought it back the SCVs and then I checked resistance ohms between um, the ground pin on the connector and frame ground and I had 150 ohms which is not good so I took apart the next interconnect right behind the, the fuel tank and looked at the pins and uh, the pins were pushed back they looked great nice and clean um, check the uh, resistance between the SCV connector and the interconnect and it was good um, I think it was like 0 0.3 0 0.4 which is good put it back together rechecked my resistance to frame ground 10 ohms big improvement so then I went to the next um, connection which is a splice pack for a bunch of grounds and I took that apart cleaned it put it back together then we dropped to 0.3 ohms, which is good. I went ahead and went to the next point, went to the frame ground, checked it. It was good, clean and tight. So I don't know, started the tractor back up. Everything's working. He's out in the field running right now. I'm going to let him go a couple more rounds. And if nothing acts up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop him again. And then I'm going to run through the, the battery connections. Um, ground connections for the battery just to make sure that that's all good since I'm over an hour away from the shop. I hate to have a intermittent electrical issue um, this far away and so I'm going to let him run a good amount of time before I leave because I want to make sure that um, it's not acting up anymore. So uh, yeah, we'll let him go a couple of rounds and then we'll check that out. He's out there kicking up dust. All right, well, all the 
battery connections and all that stuff looks good. I'm gonna let him go a couple more rounds. Everything's running good, so I guess we'll head to the next one. I'm not sure what's next. All right, here's the next service call. We got a 8RT370 setting the uh, DEF concentration. Um, they're saying that the DEF is contaminated. Um, I pulled a sample of DEF out of the tank. I put it in a refractometer, and it measured 32.5%, which is perfect. So we're going to yank the DEF tank header out of this guy. So I got to get this cover off here to access the DEF tank header, take all the lines and pinch off the coolant lines and everything and unbolt it and pull that thing up out of there. All right, got the cover off. Here's our header here, um, coolant line here. We'll pinch that off, coolant line here, pinch that off, take those out, take these lines off and the vent and the electrical connectors and then we'll blow this off real good before we disconnect any of that blow it off real good and then take these little bolts out and pull this thing out. Well, I got that job done real quick. I didn't have time to film that. I was just getting done as soon as possible because it's uh, seven o'clock in the evening and you know, a guy's got to go home to his family. So I'll see you guys on the next service call. Probably got one more in me in this video. So uh, just have to wait and see what it is. Well, it's another morning. Uh, my day's not starting out too well. I uh, was running down the highway and I was behind a truck and then all of a sudden I noticed there was some debris in the road and I couldn't dodge it and I ran over it and all of a sudden I heard a loud pop and then my tire pressure sensor said that one of my rear duels was zero. So I pulled over and I found this. So here's my outside duel big gaping hole in the side so all the side of the road repairs here I got a guy coming to pick me up we're gonna take this tire somewhere and try to get a new tire on it because I don't have a spare for this truck and uh, I was on my way to go to a 9460R that had a regeneration problem but uh, that's gonna be delayed a little bit all right, we did a NASCAR pit stop on the FAV and we got a tire put on and now I'm en route to that 9460R. So, see you when you get there. All right, we finally made it here. Let's see if we can heal this beast. All right, well, we got uh, active fuel dosing communication codes. So, we're not communicating with the fuel dosing pump. So I tried to go into the tests on my laptop and try to turn it on and we got no pressure. So I'll take the connector off and we're going to check power and ground. We got no power. No power. So it's supposed to be hot all the time. Um, get power from a fuse up in here. So I guess we'll check the fuse. Well, the fuse is blown. So now we got to figure out why. All right, popped a new fuse in and now we got 12.37 and the fuse didn't pop and I looked over the wiring and everything looks good. I don't see anything rubbed or shorted to ground or anywhere. So I'm going to assume that that pump right here, fuel dusting pump is bad. Um, those are pretty common to go bad. So we're going to go ahead and swap that guy out and plug her in and see if we can get her to pump up pressure. So we'll take this pump and housing completely off there and then we'll pull this pump out of the housing, install a new pump into it, put it back on the tractor. It's gonna leak fuel.
off hard the whole way. for that to spin. Nipex wrench pliers are your best friend. using a snap-on four-way angle wrench. The Tecton four-way angle wrenches are just as good too. I've got some of them in the bigger sizes. on these always want to turn. Never fails. Get in here. There we go. <sighs> on the ground, why don't you? New dosing pump. O-rings and hardware kit. Alrighty. Screwdriver and pry this thing up a little bit. Ugh. 
boop. Okay. Put our new o ring on. Housing's already lubricated with fuel, so that'll slide right in. New bolts. Now we're gonna go put it on the tractor. Okay, that's done. I wrapped that harness a little bit. It was starting to rub through that loom on the pump a little bit. So had a little tape there for its protection. And now anytime you replace any component on the fuel dosing system, you have to do a fuel dosing air purge, purge test through um, service advisor. So um, we're gonna get that done. And then we're gonna do a service regeneration on this girl. Our pump's turning on and we've got pressure and the code went to stored. So we now have communication with the fuel dosing pump. Um, now I'm gonna do the fuel dosing air purge test. So it's kind of like a mini regeneration almost. You know, it just, you run the engine and then, you know, it's gonna dose fuel to purge all the air out of the system. So we'll get that done and then do a regeneration. It regenerated successfully, so this tractor is good to go. The soot level went to not needed, which is what we want. So um, fuel dosing system and everything's working properly. The exhaust temperatures went to where they were supposed to be, at least where the ECU was desiring it to be. So that's good. Um, that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you like the, uh, the adventures of service calls as much as I do. Um, every day is an adventure when you're a John Deere Ag Tech. You never know what you're going to do or where you're going to end up. So I really like that about this job. I really love being out in the field and just going from tractor to tractor, you know, fixing problems and diagnosing them is kind of what I love to do is being out in the field and getting out of the shop, you know. It's kind of nice. Get some fresh air. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel and keep that green iron moving, and I'll see you on the next one.